Oh, hey, what's going on? Oh, right, we're on the clock. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do five really quick, really easy tricks in After Effects, and I'm gonna prove to you guys that after Effects isn't this big scary beast that we all think it is. It's just a matter of knowing where things are and then implementing it. So let's get these five tricks done as quickly as possible. Go time. All right, let's start off with something crazy simple. You might not even know it's there. You don't really have to do any work. It's super simple. Text effects in After Effects. Oh, that's like a tongue twister. Here we go. It'll blow your mind how quickly you can get it done and you'll be thinking, why wasn't I doing this the whole time? Text effects just got way easier. So you're gonna type whatever you want. In our case, just be better. Makes sense that I would type that. Go up to the top, go to animation, apply animation presets. Now, when you go to this, you've got a whole bunch of presets. We're gonna look specifically at the text ones, but when you guys have some free time, I actually encourage you to go through and just look at all the effects that are in there. Let's go, you know, animate in. We wanna animate our text in. One that I like to use quite often is the typewriter effect. So you're gonna click the typewriter effect, click open, and it automatically does all the work for you. Once you play it back, just be better. Gets typed out on screen, and the beauty of it is once you open up or expand that layer, you can go to the text, you'll see those two little dots on the timeline. Just keep expanding the menu until those dots turn into little diamonds, and what you can do is highlight both diamonds, move it along the timeline for when you want it to animate, or you can change the position of the first or second individually and make that type faster or slower depending on what you need. My only advice to you guys is when you're using these text effects, be careful, use them sparingly or try them out first because not all of them look great just on their own. All right, the second one, also a text effect. Very cool if you're doing like an action sequence or like the, you know, explosions. Michael Bay hires you to do some titling on one of his videos. It's the shatter effect in After Effects. Very easy. The beauty about something like this is it's simple to do and then you can just push the limits of how far you wanna take it, how crazy, how in depth, how realistic you wanna go with it. It's very easy, check this out. We've got our Just Be Better text, naturally. We're gonna go over to the Effects and Presets panel on the right and type in shatter, boom. Drag that onto your text layer and you're gonna get this like block wireframe brick wall kind of looking thing. We don't want that, so it's pretty straightforward. On the left side, you're gonna see this view button. It says wireframe plus forces. We're gonna to go to rendered. So when you do that, your text is just gonna be normal. You're not gonna see anything, but that's okay. Right below what we just did in rendered, you're gonna to go to the shape drop down, open that up, and you can see pattern is bricks right now. So you can change this. There's a whole bunch to choose from. Let's just go with glass for the sake of argument. So we're gonna see what it looks like if the, our text was made out of glass and it just shattered like that. Now in order to see the effect, all you gotta do is scrub up and down the timeline. So if we go a little bit forward, boom, you can see that text is already starting to shatter. And then this is where you start playing with the features that come along with the shatter effect to get the desired look that you want. So under the shape tab, you're gonna see a tab that says repetitions. By increasing this number, you're basically changing the size of the pieces that you'll see. Do you want a bunch of small pieces shattering or do you want like three or four huge pieces shattering? By changing that number, that's what's gonna happen. So we'll drag that up and you guys can see as we shatter now, there's a lot more smaller pieces exploding. Right underneath the shape tab, you've got force one and force two. You can play with the position of where the shatter's coming from. So you want it to come from the left side of the text and explode that way, right from the middle, right, bottom, up, down. You can mess with all those just by dragging the sliders around. So we've changed the position over to about 400 and you can see the shatter effect starts around the J area of Just Be Better as opposed to right down the middle where it was initially. The next drop down you're gonna to wanna to look at is physics. Now this one is personal preference. You can do whatever you please in this one. What it's gonna do is affect how explosive that shatter is or like does it just kind of explode and fall downward with gravity. Essentially you're playing God and you get to affect the gravity. Does it gonna explode straight up, straight out, straight at the viewer? That's all done in the physics panel. I can go through it, but we're trying to make this video as quick as possible, and that's something you guys can play with and experiment on your own. And finally, to complete this look, you're gonna go over to the effects and presets panel again and type in force motion blur. That's the one you wanna use. Just drag that onto your text layer, 
And now the animation of the exploding has this artificial motion blur attached to it and it just just makes it look that much more believable. Like if you don't add this motion blur, it kind of looks too crisp and like for the viewer it'll be like, eh, I don't know if that really makes sense. You know, it should be a little bit more blurry than that. The next effect is the animated strokes in After Effects. Check this out. So what you're gonna do again is start with your text. Just be better, always just be better. The first step is to right click the text, go down to create and then create shapes from text. New text layer is gonna pop up, just be better outline. What you can do here is delete your actual text layer. We just need the shape layer. We're gonna select that layer, drop it down, go to this little add button right here, click this little play button, and we are gonna add trim paths. We're gonna go down and expand this little trim paths option. And once we've done that, we're gonna go to the top where you see fill and stroke. Now you're gonna hold down your alt key and click it to change the type of fill that it has. So you can see there's a gradient, there's a radial gradient, and then there's nothing. Nothing. We want nothing for the fill. We're gonna go over to the stroke, same process, but we're gonna choose an outline for the stroke and we're gonna adjust the thickness of that stroke to whatever you guys want. I'm happy with like seven pixels for the case of this one right here. And then we're gonna go back down to the trim paths one drop down that we had before and we're gonna click the stopwatch and set N to zero, zero percent your text disappears. So now if you don't have it selected, you'll just see a black screen. You're gonna scroll over however many seconds or keyframes you want the animation to take, and then you're gonna drag end back to 100. So when you play that back, it looks something like this. Bam, just be better. I expect you guys to be using that animation a lot more considering how quick and easy it is to do. Let's move on to some more visual effects, After Effects style. We'll get into the nitty gritty, which by the way, still not that hard. It's very easy to do and it'll look even cooler. It's just one of those things that takes a few seconds but elevates your footage. The one we're looking at is CC Light Rays. Yeah, that sounds cool, doesn't it? Check this out. All right, so first things first, we're gonna drag our footage onto the timeline. And for the sake of this clip, I have just this little slow-mo pan of a glass of water in front of a light. It makes no sense, but we're gonna find a frame where the light is prominent. So right about here, ooh, that looks good. And then we're gonna go over back to our effects and presets panel and type in CC light rays. Boom, drag that onto your footage. And once you do that, a little dot is gonna appear. Now that dot is important because that's the source of the light rays. What you're gonna do is take that dot Drag it over somewhere that has a lot of highlights, a very, like a source of light. So in our case, we want it right in the middle of the glass. Now on the left side, you can adjust the intensity or the softness and the radius to your own personal preference. Obviously take a look at it and don't go way over the top. That doesn't make sense. Make it look kind of natural. Sometimes just that subtle little flick of light is like next level. You know what, for the sake of this, we're gonna bump up the intensity a little bit and bump up the radius a little bit so you guys can see it. And then when we play it back, as the glass moves, you can see it almost looks like the light is reflecting through the glass from the, the source in the background. Now I have the intensity and radius set way, way up so it doesn't look that realistic, but if you set it accordingly, you get a really good effect. And again, how long did that take? Guys, that's like drag and drop stuff. It's amazing. Oh, wow, that one was really quick, wasn't it? And now that we're really rolling, that CC light rays effect also works on text. So let's show you guys how to use that same effect, but on text that you've typed. Guess what we're gonna type? Yeah, I know, you got it, just be better. So just be better. I'm, we're all, through this tutorial being better and I love it. That's what I love about you guys, always willing to be better. Okay, we've got our text. Now, when you're using the CC light rays effect on text, it doesn't work just straight up on the text. You can't drag and drop it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our text layer, right click, pre-compose, and then, you guessed it, CC light rays in the effects panel. Drag it onto your pre-comp and you get that little dot again. So we're gonna drag that dot over to where we want the effect to start, which is to the left of the just. But here's the difference between the previous method and this method. You're gonna go over to the left side and where it says center, you'll see the coordinates of where it is. So if I drag this first number, it moves. What you're gonna do is when you want that animation to start, hit the little stopwatch beside center, start a keyframe right there, 
and then move it accordingly. So if you wanted it to go, you know, left to right really quickly, that's just a quick one keyframe at the beginning, one keyframe at the end. Spacing them out either makes that transition longer or shorter. So for the sake of the video, we'll just do it quickly. We've got our keyframe, we're gonna move it forward about one second and then we're gonna move the light all the way to the other side. This is gonna create a nice simple effect on our text, but then you can start playing with it. You adjust the intensity, the radius, the softness so that it creates that look that you want. Barely visible at the beginning, super bright in the middle and barely visible at the end, just using keyframes. Again, that's a personal preference thing, so I encourage you guys to take this Play with it, perfect it the way you want it, but let's see what that simple little trick did where we just dragged it across. It took two seconds to create those keyframes and you've got this cool flashy light effect in the background. Now the last effect is a screen replacement effect. I know there's like an easier way to do it in Premiere, which is the corner pin and you just you know, find the screen, replace the pins, but we're gonna do it in After Effects. This is the better way to do it and this is the more professional way to do it. You're gonna get reflections. It's gonna be so realistic by the end of it that you won't even know that you replaced the screen. It's also, you guessed it, very easy to do. After Effects, you're not as scary as you say you are. Let's do it. So in order to replace a screen in the footage, you actually have to have footage of a blank screen. So we're gonna take our footage of a blank screen, drag it onto our timeline, there it is. And what you're gonna do first is duplicate that footage, Command or Control D depending PC or Mac. So the tedious part about this one is masking in your footage. If you have a still shot and the screen doesn't move, it's, it's easy, you just have to draw a rectangle. However, if your footage does move, you're gonna have to go in and adjust the mask as you move around that screen but it's gonna create an effect that's totally worth it in the end. So we're gonna go up, grab our pen tool. With our top layer selected, we're gonna mask out the area of the screen that we wanna replace the footage. Draw a nice little rectangle, and then with the drop-down expanded, we're gonna go to mask, and then check the inverted box. So now you can see that the area that would have footage on screen has now been erased. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add the footage that you want on screen. We're gonna go over to the project tab. In this case, we're gonna grab our picture of our video of water and the glass, that one from earlier, and we're gonna drag that in between the two layers. So you can see it's on the screen there. It kind of looks like, hey, that was, that was on the screen, but we're gonna make it even better. So in my video here, the computer screen is on an angle. If you film it straight on, it's probably a lot easier because you just scale the rectangle to the size you want, but this is also very easy. Similarly to the corner pin technique in Premiere, what you're gonna do is go over to the effects and presets panel and type in power pin. Now that's just After Effects flexing on Premiere saying, oh, you got corner pin, we've got power pin. Go to CC power pin on the right side, drag that onto your footage, and you'll see a yellow box. Now it works the exact same as corner pin, just more powerful. You drag those corners to match the direction of your screen, and once you have it where you want it, boom. Once you're happy with the positioning of the footage, you go back to that original lower set of footage with the screen, making that little sandwich. You drag that sandwich over your water footage, and now the screen goes away. It turns black again, your footage looks like the original footage. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna right click that original screen footage, go to blending modes, and go to screen. We're gonna change it to screen. You get it? Screen? Because it's a screen? I didn't even hear one of you guys laugh. I'm just kidding. So now you can see by changing it to screen, you get the natural reflections of the room back, but it doesn't mask your footage. So you have the reflection of the screen and you've got your new footage replaced. And when you play that back, it is gonna look beautiful, just like an actual screen, and nobody will be any wiser that you did it all in After Effects. So let's take what we've learned put all of it to use into one super cool video clip about staying hydrated and drinking water. <laughs>right, you know the drill. If you learned something, if you liked it, if you have anything to say, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. After Effects, not that scary. And I think you guys are starting to realize that just like I did. I say get into it, dive right in, make After Effects your Leave some comments down below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed because that would be really helpful to me and you might even learn something in the future. But until then, love ya.